Hi there. Welcome back to the Brave Potter continuation. Remember, in the previous video, what was happening? The silly man got onto a tiger thinking it's his donkey, drags it home, ties it outside his house. And the next day, thanks to the villagers, when he sees a tiger outside his house, he faints. So let's see what happened next. A comedy of errors. Be prepared for that. Nobody believed the Potter story. He kept saying, no, I didn't do anything. I don't know how this tiger is here. But everyone kept saying, oh, how brave. Oh, how courageous. Oh, how modest. He's not even ac acknowledging that he bought, he caught such a uh, dangerous creature. So everyone who met him called him the brave Potter. That's how he got the tag, the brave Potter. The simple Potter himself didn't understand what was happening. A few years later, so just when he was thinking that it's all over, it was a nightmare that's over now, a few years later, war broke out between the Potter's country and a much stronger neighbor. The king immediately gathered a large army, but he realized that it was not strong enough to save his country from the clutches of his enemies. He needed a hero to lead his army. Where could such a brave man be found? He was wondering. That's when the king hurriedly called his ministers together and asked their advice. So one of the ministers remembered the story of the brave potter who barehandedly caught a tiger. And he says, Your Majesty, the minister said, I know someone who can lead our army. The king immediately sent a messenger to the potter's house. When the potter realized that he had been made general of the army, he was so scared. The king had ordered him to come to the palace the next day itself. How could he, a poor ignorant potter, become the general of an army? He had never carried a sword, leave alone riding a horse. Oh, I shall die because of that stupid donkey. He is still cursing that silly donkey of his. He groaned, the potter groaned in front of his wife. He has only brought us troubles. The next day, he and his wife left for the capital. They had to go. The king had summoned them. The king was pleased to see him and he ordered the potter to lead the army into battle the next day. The enemy were not far away from the gates of the city. A splendid house had been prepared for the potter and his wife. The horse which would carry him into battle was also ready, shiny in the stable. That night the potter could not sleep. He was nervous and worried because he did not know how to ride a horse. How is he going to go and fight a battle? If I fall off, everybody will laugh at me, he thought. I will get up early tomorrow morning and practice riding a horse. At dawn, the potter woke up his wife and they went to the stable. They saw the beautiful brown horse ready for its new master. And what does the potter say? Oh, how tall he is! Sighed the potter. I shall never be able to climb onto its back. He is only used to climbing a short donkey, but never a horse. Put this bench beside him, said his wife, and use it as a step to climb onto him. Not bad, let's try. Even with the help of the bench, the potter had much difficulty climbing onto the horse's back. When he was finally seated, he found it too slippery. Please tie my feet to the stirrups, dear wife, said the potter. Stirrups are those buckle-like things that hang on the sides of the horse, which help you place your foot and then sit on top of the horse. So he asked his wife to tie his feet to those stirrups. Otherwise, I, say, sure, I shall certainly fall off, he said. His wife found some rope and bound her husband's feet tightly to the stirrups. She then passed the rope underneath the horse and tied the two stirrups together. Oh my God, what the heck are they up to? 
She also passed a length of rope around the porter's waist and tied him to the saddle. The saddle is a seat that they place on top of the horse for us to sit on it. So, complete packaging is done. Now, please tie my hands to his neck. The potter is still not confident. He's sure he's going to slip and fall. Please tie my hands to the neck of the horse, said the potter. Meanwhile, the big brown horse was getting impatient. What's not happening on it? And he started pawing his hoofs on the ground. When the potter's wife tried to pass another rope around the horse's neck, the horse suddenly jumped free. It galloped out of the stable with the potter hanging like a sack of rice on the onto the horse's neck and praying to all the gods to save his life. After galloping through the quiet streets, the horse crashed through the city gates and raced across open fields. It leapt over fences and streams and began to head right into the enemy's camp. What is happening? When the potter realized where they were going, he tried harder than ever to stop the horse. He doesn't want to go right into the enemy's camp without any weapons and that too alone and that too on a crazy horse. He pulled wildly at the reins of the horse, but no use. The horse galloped on. Look at that. Looks like he did manage to do something on the way. Let's see what did he do. When they passed a young tree, the potter grabbed at the branch. But the horse did not stop. Instead, the entire tree was pulled out of the ground. And the potter, imagine the potter holding the horse, holding a tree, galloping with top speed. Who's watching all this? A sentry. That means a soldier stationed at the gate of the enemy's camp. He saw this. He saw a potter galloping towards the camp with a tree in one hand and the reins of a horse in another. He looked like a hero. That must be the general who captured a tiger with his bare hands, he thought. Looks like the brave potter story spread across kingdoms. Now he has uprooted a tree with one hand. He is not an ordinary man. He is a giant. Run, run, save yourselves, scream the sentry. The famous tiger general is coming at the head of a large army to attack us. He has the strength of a giant. He has uprooted a tree with one hand. Imagine the panic he created in the enemy's camp by screaming out all these words. The frightened soldiers fled, ran away from there. Their king was left by himself in the tent. They deserted their king. Hurriedly, he wrote a letter begging for peace, apologizing for even thinking of attacking the country. He left his letter in the tent. Then he jumped onto his horse and followed his soldiers. So the enemy's camp was deserted. Everybody fled from there. When the potter's brown horse finally reached this camp, it halted. Finally, with shaking hands, the potter untied his feet and he fell to the ground. He was exhausted with a thumping heart. When he looked around, he was surprised to find the camp was empty. He looked into the king's tent and found the letter. That puzzled him. What did just happen? The puzzled potter walked back to the city. He didn't go back on the horse, mind you. He took the letter and he walked back to the city with the letter in his pocket. He went to his wife and he gave the letter. Dear wife, he said, Never in my life will I ride a horse again. Please take this letter to our king and tell him that the enemy has run away. I am going to bed. He was terribly exhausted. Not an iota of strength in him to carry the good news to the king. His wife ran towards the palace with the letter. When the king read the letter, 
he was full of praise. For whom? For his new general. He asked the porter's wife, where is your husband? My husband is tired, your majesty. The servants have put him to bed, answered the wife respectfully. She said, kindly forgive him, he is too tired to come here. Let him rest today. Tell him to come tomorrow to receive his award, the king said. Next morning, the porter went to the king's palace. He left the brown horse in the stable and walked to the palace with his wife. The streets were filled with cheering crowds. Everyone came down to see who is this brave porter, the brave general who defeated the enemy single-handedly. They had all heard about his brave action. Look how humble he is, they were saying to each other. Why? Any other man would ride to the palace on a horse with pride, but he is walking like any ordinary man. How humble, what a brave but modest man. Everybody was appreciating him, but little did they know that he has sworn to never sit on a horse ever again. The king rewarded the potter so well that he did not need to work again. The country was peaceful for the rest of his life and the potter never rode a horse again. So this is that ironic story about the brave potter. Did you have a good time? It was quite humorous. Believe me, writing a humorous story is much more difficult than writing a serious or a casual one. So you have to see how the author built up the story. How did he start? What were the turning points? How did he mix a comedy of errors in order to add humor to the story? So in the next video, what shall we do? We shall look into some new words and the question answers of this reading. See you soon.